Okay, welcome. Here we go. It's good to see you. And finally, we've got this working. Maybe I can edit it a little bit so that we don't have to wait as long for it to get started. I uh, hope you like the new logo. This is the second live stream of the Brain Club. Okay, welcome. Here we go. It's good to see you. And finally, we've got this working. Maybe I can... All right, that's just my phone talking to me. It's a little bit of a delay. And I just want to make sure that what is being seen by someone viewing this from the live stream is going to work. And it looks like we've got the screen better organized so that you have the slides on one side and my image over there on the right. And so I'm not blocking the screen at all. I'm in a room with a much better lighting. Hopefully you can see my face. And I've got my pointer ready to go. Okay, all right. So, first image here, what do you see? It might look like a keyboard, it might look like a sticky pad, it might look like some kind of old device or mechanism from the 1950s or 1960s, but no, it's actually a white chocolate bar. And what I want to ask you is, if we were to take one piece from this one on the left, how could we still end up with the same chocolate bar? This is called the infinite chocolate bar problem. Can you solve it? I'll give you a few minutes to think about it and I'll give you one hint. You've got to cut along one way and then you've got to make another cut and another few cuts. Okay, so do we cut it like this and we cut it like this or like that or whatever? How do we do it? I'll let you think about that for a moment and then I'll show you the solution. Alright, so here we have uh, the infinite chocolate bar and this is how we're going to do it. And you're welcome for this technique, this strategy on how to sneak a piece if you're sharing this chocolate bar with someone else. And it'll make it appear that you have a whole chocolate bar and you're still going to split it fairly in half when you got a secret piece. So let's watch the video. Alright, so we're going to cut it along there. Cut along there, and of course we've got to get our little piece. And there's the diagram on how we're going to switch it around. And we put that up there, and we're going to move that up there. And there you have it. We have the same chocolate bar. So there it was. Now of course there is some chocolate bar that's lost. However, we have the illusion, given that this piece is more or less the same size as all these pieces, and it looks like to the unaided eye, without any rulers to measure, that the chocolate bar is the same size. It's kind of a fun little game. Here's another video in which we actually have someone measuring it, and uh, I won't play the video, but it turns out that uh, using the metric system here, we're going to have 17 centimeters on the side here, and 7.4, I believe, at the bottom, but 17 exactly before we do the, the cutting, and then it's going to end up at 16.4. So we actually have a little bit of a loss, but as you can see from this chocolate bar, this one still looks like uh, the, the same size here. And it's, uh, it's like uh, an illusion for our viewer. And it can it look like that these are all the same size. So maybe someone who looks at it is like, oh, it just got dropped and then it cracked in a few places. No big deal. Uh, when you secretly got away with that one little piece over there. Okay, hopefully you enjoyed that. Hopefully it challenged your brain a little bit. All right, so let's have a few laughs and exercise the front part of our brain in which we see words and sentences framed in a new way. And riddles also, they uh, help exercise the front part of our brain analyzing information in a different way. So why did the donut visit the dentist? He needed a chocolate filling. So some donuts have filling in it, some of it's are chocolate. The dentist, obviously you go to the dentist to get a filling. 
So we've got those two worlds connected there, the donut world and the dentist world. Here's a fun way to interpret your chocolate and coffee intake. Uh, we all know that we have to eat our fair share of vegetables for our health. And chocolate is made from beans, coffee is made from beans, and beans are vegetables. Have you had your vegetables today? Just a little fun there. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Okay, goals of the class. Now if you're new to the uh, YouTube Brain Club Live, then uh, you probably don't know the goals yet. We have three goals. If you are experienced, if you've been to a Brain Club before, if you've seen the last video, then I hope you can quiz yourself on what the three goals are. We have an acronym with three letters, and hopefully those letters help you remember what the goals of the class are. So uh, the acronym is FAM in case you haven't gotten it already. I hope you're quizzing yourself. If you're on your own watching this live, then just go ahead and quiz yourself and what FAM means. If you're with a group, hopefully you guys are helping each other out if you want to do that. And if you are doing it on your own, in a group or however, go ahead and just try to remember what the F and the A and the M mean. All right, so yes, number one is have fun. Number two is take action, apply the information. Number three, improve your memory. And our acronym is FAM. Okay, so fun, a very important intrinsic motivator helps us continue to do the things that we have fun doing. And if we can connect that with our brain health, the brain healthy lifestyle, then we're going to more consistently exercise the parts of a brain healthy lifestyle. Number two, take action. We learn a lot of information. We do not have a deficiency in information. What our deficiency is, is actually using the information, applying it in our day to day and consistently. And that's where the fun comes in place. And so that fun combined with action is going to improve your brain. And what do we associate with an improved brain? We, we associate memory, improved memory, being able to recall events, stories, and our experiences. Okay, on today's agenda, we're going to do some of our body exercises to wake up our brain. And we're going to do some brain games to exercise our brain a little bit. And then we're going to learn about chocolate and the brain, one of my favorite subjects because it's so cool. And I'll let you in a little secret. I don't really eat chocolate. That's how cool I find it. And I want other people to try it out for themselves. And if they actually can tolerate chocolate, and some people can, most people can, then use it as part of your brain healthy lifestyle eat a piece of dark chocolate after dinner, after lunch. That's what a lot of people do that I've talked with and make sure that it's not milk chocolate. But we're going to get into that later. And then I've got a joke for you. Hopefully we can leave the Brain Club live uh, with a little bit of humor today. Okay. I'm just checking my connection here. I just look like on my phone that I'm losing some connection. I'm hoping that's just on my phone. Okay, I think my phone, my phone was, which is helping me see if this live is still going well. I think my phone just disconnected from the network that I'm using. I think everything should be fine. Thanks for pausing with me for a moment.
All right, I think we're okay. All right, okay, let's get going. Uh, so, so do our moves to remember. Okay, let's do five deep breaths, and we're going to spell a word, see if you can remember the word or you can figure out the word. And we're gonna inhale and say a letter on each exhale. So here we go. Say letter C, 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 C as in cat. All right, inhale. Say letter O, 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 yes, very good. Inhale. Say letter C, C as in cat, C as in cat. All right, C, very good, very good. Inhale. Say letter O, 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 O. All right, one more. Now say letter A, 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 A. Very good. All right, inhale. Now laugh. Ha, 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 ha. Very good, very good. Okay, and next we're going to take off, wearing glasses, go ahead and take off your glasses. And then rub your hands together like this. Um, using your hands as a way to wake up your brain is one of the most effective ways to sharpen your brain. Uh, hand exercises really do help rewire the brain. And we've always got our hands with us, right? Alright, so go ahead and place those hands on the eyes. All right, so you're gonna do this for about two minutes if you can. And right now we're just going to quiz ourselves. What, sh what color shirt am I wearing? Do you remember? How is my hair styled? What color are my eyes? Were you able to figure that out? What was the name of the problem? The first thing I showed you as a part of this presentation. Do you remember? And what were the jokes? Do you remember anything about the jokes? Test your memory. Try and review all of the presentation, the parts of the presentation that you saw before we're, this exercise that we're doing. Just, just test your memory. See if you were paying attention. Okay. Three deep breaths. Inhale through the nose. <sighs> Ah. Ah. All right, very good, very good. All right, so how did you do with uh, the previous parts of the presentation today? Do you remember the, that the slides that I showed you earlier? So we had the infinite chocolate bar. We had the joke about the donuts going to the dentist to get the chocolate filling. And then we had the joke about coffee and chocolate being beans Beans are vegetables. Have you eaten your vegetables today? All right, very good. All right, you can take your hands away from your eyes. Go ahead and blink your eyes and then look around with your eyeballs. Okay, very good. And I'm gonna take, I'm going to show you a hand exercise. So we're gonna point the finger out and then we're gonna point the pinky out. And then we're going to switch like that. So you can just try doing the pointer and then the pinky. Change the with the pointer in like that, then bring the pinky out. And on the other side, you're going to put the pinky in and bring the pointer out. So going one at a time. So pointer in, pinky out. On this hand, put the pinky in and then the pointer out. And then you're going to try and just switch back and forth like this. Switch back and forth. Switch back and forth. So as long as you're trying to do this, you're getting all the brain benefits. Okay. I'm going to lower my hands down like that. And uh, you can try this one too. You got a thumb and you got a point. And you're going to switch back and forth like that. Switch back and forth. Switch back and forth. And again, you can do it one at a time. You can do a thumb, pointer, thumb, pointer, thumb, pointer. Remember, when you point out, the thumb doesn't go up, just the point, thumb, point. And then you've got the thumb here, then we've got the point out, thumb up, point out, thumb up, point out. And then you can do mirror, th two points out, thumbs up, two points out, thumbs up, two points out. And then try the thumb and the point, and you're going to switch. 
switch back and forth. And doing these hand exercises actually helps train your focus, improves your dexterity, and helps rewire the brain. Your brain is probably not used to doing this. And so when it's difficult, when it's hard, just like trying to remember words from a new language, it's going to create new neural circuitry in the brain, which improves cognitive reserve when you have more variety in the different types of neural connections in the brain. And this is good. It makes us more resilient to stroke, to traumatic brain injury, and to brain degenerative diseases. So try that stuff out. Also, you can cross your arms like this. This is something called hemispheric synchronization. And our brain, when it does even just this, there's an imaginary line right down the middle. And when we put our hand, even our legs work too, but we're just using the hands right now. When we put the hand across like this, our brain is like, is that my right? Is that my left hand? So it's going laterally across the hemispheres from one hemisphere to the other, communicating more. And so that helps improve creativity and lower stress. So we're going to massage our eyebrows like this. So we're adding stimulation from the face. Uh, we're adding stimulation, uh, we're more uh, s sensory input in the brain, sensing how our face is being touched. So we're engaging more of our brain because our face is activating as well as our hemispheric synchronization and also our fingers are sensing as well. And our face and our hands and fingers are extraordinarily sensitive. Lots of neurons in the cerebrum that are designated to control the sensing and the motor function of the hands and the face. In fact, it's two-thirds of the whole motor and sensory sulcus in the brain, which is about right underneath my head band right here. That's where the homunculus is, where the sensory and motor cortex are. And we're stimulating two-thirds of that when we're moving our face and our hands, which is excellent. And especially if you're doing something novel, your brain has to pay more attention, has to create these new neural connections firing in a novel way. So that's why this is a, these are great exercises to do. All right. And then uh, we can do this too. Point the fingers like this. And then you're going to go on the lips, back and forth. And then you're going to switch back and forth. And you can also even just move your face in new ways. Mm. This is really good. So if you're doing a calisthenics, yoga, um, maybe you're at the gym and you're stretching, maybe just like move your face around, stretch your face. This is good because the physical component of those exercises at the gym is also reflected in the health of your brain. And what, what better um, can you do by adding even more? And that's using the face. Okay, so face, hands, the key to helping to, uh, the key to helping activate your brain, we were rewiring the neuro neural circuitry. All right, all right, so let's go ahead and take an inhale, inhale. Oh. Two more breaths just like that, inhale. Oh. Very good, inhale. Oh. All right, very good job, very good job. Okay, so we're going to move on from there so we can get to the rest of our presentation here about chocolates and we're going to do some brain games. All right, so do you remember the goals? We're testing your short-term to long-term memory right now. and We gave you all these great techniques to activate your brain with oxygen, hemispheric synchronization, and hand exercises, all this great stuff. And... Um, Hopefully that helped contributed to the alertness of your brain, paying attention, and maybe you can remember the goals of the class. So what were they? I'll give you a moment to do your best to remember. I'm going to put my glasses back on. Okay. Yes, yeah, so if you guessed have fun, great job. Take action and improve your memory. Acronym is F A M. Okay. This is our ask to remember exercise. 
socialization, wonderful way of maintaining a healthy brain. People who were surveyed, who uh, if people were surveyed and they were asked how often they socialized meaningly, meaningfully in their lives, and they, they observed that people who at least socialized meaningfully with a group uh, that they uh, connect, felt they have felt a connection with socially uh, once a week, they reported uh, a much lower diagnosis of Alzheimer's. So socialization is a really effective way at helping to maintain the healthy brain. All right, so questions for you to mull over. And if you're with a group of people, hopefully you can ask these questions amongst yourselves. If this video has already been recorded and you're watching this after the fact, uh, just go ahead and pause right here, read the questions, and then s interview each other about um, you, you know, what are your answers. All right, so number one, if you had an infinite supply of delicious brain-healthy chocolate, who would you give some to first and why? Uh, for me, I would give some to my sister, Camilla. She loves sweets and chocolates. Uh, I, would I would make sure that it's healthy sweet chocolate, maybe sweetened with stevia or honey. And I'm guessing she would still like it. So that's the first person. And this is brain-healthy chocolate here, so we're not talking about milk chocolate or chocolate with too much sugar in it. Uh, number two, what do you or don't you, why don't you or why do you or don't you eat organic dark chocolate? And for me, I would say I don't eat chocolate in general because I am extraordinarily sensitive to caffeine and the stimulant theophylline and theobromine in chocolate. It's a cardiac stimulant. So for me, I have uh, the utmost respect and appreciation for the mineral, vitamin, health profile, the, the, the polyphenols, the antioxidants in chocolate, and all the health benefit that it gives to someone eating chocolate. But unfortunately, the stimulants just don't, don't work for me, so I tend to stay away from chocolate. Um, and hopefully uh, you guys can answer that to the best of your ability. Uh, so why is chocolate so romantic? Well, chocolate, it's a cardiac stimulant like I mentioned, so there might be some connection there where the heart is definitely stimulated and it elevates your feelings of being in love and just feeling great overall. I'll go over some of the benefits of chocolate later. But if you're feeling really good and your heart's pumping strongly, then you've got all the predis predispositions to having a romantic experience. And people tend to give chocolate out for uh, displays of love and also Valentine's Day. What do we think? Flowers and chocolate. Chocolate and flowers. So chocolate is definitely something associated with romance, with love. Some extra questions for you here if you want to socialize a little bit more. Uh, can chocolate help you find true love? Maybe. I'm not sure. How does thinking about chocolate change your mindset? Definitely increases blood flow to the brain. Another benefit of chocolate we'll be talking about a little bit later. So hopefully you enjoyed these questions as examples for um, subjects that you can talk about to socialize and socialization um, on any, any topic more or less as long as it's invited and it's, it's pleasant. Uh, then it's going to be good for your brain. Okay, so this is a brain game exercise that I want to do with you, and it's called Images. Uh, the full name, I'll change it at another future point in time, it's called Images to Remember. And what I'm going to show you are some images, and what I want you to do is focus on these four memory techniques here. And number one, we're going to verbalize. We're going to actually say what we see. We're going to describe the color, the shapes, the, the number of objects in the image if we can. And it's going to help us connect with the, what we hear and our memory and also producing the, the sounds themselves so with our larynx, with our, the muscles of our mouth. This all activates our brain even more so that we can connect and pay more attention to what we're seeing. And so uh, one thing I will add uh, before I go into the other techniques is that sometimes it's not our brain that is suffering or degenerating when we're, we're not uh, remembering things. It's probably because we're just not really that engaged. We're not really paying attention to what we're looking at or what information we're trying to connect with. And it's just maybe we don't have a motivation to. So, yeah, if you can connect with the why. That's, a, that's another story, though. So we're going to focus on these basic techniques. If you already know the why, 
that you have with the information you're trying to remember. So number two, recognize patterns. Our brain is a pattern recognizing machine and this is basically what it's designed to do. So when I show you more than one image, we get to image number two, number three, number four, I want you to try and see the connection. What are the similarities? What are the themes between the images? And that's going to help you recognize patterns and your brain is going to give you a dopamine hit. Basically dopamine makes you feel a sense of reward. And so that every time you recognize patterns, the brain is rewarding you, telling you you're doing, it, you're doing a good job. This is what you were designed to do. Number three, find a story. Do you have a connection with what you're seeing in the picture as far as your personal experience, a movie you watched, a book you read? So story is very powerful because we have already these, pre, these preset images, these preset patterns in our brain already already set. All we have to do is access those and then connect it with what we're seeing and that's going to kind of help us remember it even more quickly. Emotion, emotion and memory are really tied together very strongly. And you can think of traumatic events and how you remember those like a car crash. Unfortunately this isn't very pleasant but emotions are connected with memories but even positive emotions. Your wedding day, the birth of your first child, uh, your, the, your, one of your children walking for the first time. These are moments that we are very elated and joyful about and our brain stores them. So connect with the emotion that you feel. All right, so what, what do we see here? Um, hopefully you are verbalizing wherever you're watching this from. I really encourage you to do it. Don't be shy. You're actually contributing to a, a habit or a technique. And in this case, uh, this is something very delicious. So um, hopefully this is fun for you. And when you actually get to see a chocolate covered strawberry in person maybe you'll start verbalizing it and then you're like and the person next to you is going to ask you hey what what are you doing and you're like well this is a fun experience and I want to get into the habit of verbalizing it so that I can remember it even better so we've got green we've got red we've got brown we've got sort of a pale yellow or a yellowish on the stem there the the strawberry on the left we've got white we've got a square image maybe you got a shiny texture you got a seedy texture and we've got two strawberries. So those are the kind of things that you can verbalize. We've got shadow. And a story I can think of is I went to a bakery. I saw all kinds of different chocolate covered strawberries. Some with dots, some with stripes, some with white chocolate on one side of the strawberry and, and the dark chocolate on the other side. Maybe even milk chocolate. And uh, these remind me of dessert. These remind me of reward. These remind me of having a good time. These are the kind of things you can verbalize. Hopefully you got around to doing some of that. All right, what do you see here? I'll give you a few moments this time. All right, so let's go ahead and verbalize some of this. So we've got two brains. We've got chocolate brains. We've got a dark chocolate. We've got a milk chocolate brain. We've got some shadow beneath the brain. So they're, they're setting, sitting on a floor, some type of surface. We've got the background, which is white. The image is more or less square. And we've got two brains. And it's sort of a shimmery. The texture is bumpy. And uh, we've got the shine on the surface of the brains there story I can think of is I actually make chocolate brains myself so it's definitely connected to my own personal experience and I'm thinking of maybe Pinky and the Brain it used to be a, a cartoon from the your attention please library is preparing to close in one half hour at 9 p.m. desktop PCs will shut down automatically at about 5 till the hour the breezeway restrooms will be locked at a quarter till. The library is preparing to close in one half hour at 9 p.m. All right, so yeah, I'm at the library and I'm in a meeting room right now, so that's that announcement is just saying that they are closing in about half an hour. Okay, all right, so moving along. All right, next image, we've got a bunny rabbit. We've got shining uh, reflections off the bunny and it looks like a small bunny, it's a chocolate bunny, it's in a rectangular image 
we've got a flower right here on the bottom and that's probably that's the foot of the bunny I thought it was an egg and so yeah it's pretty straightforward if we notice any patterns they're all edible all chocolate covered all related to chocolate and then next we have chocolate covered bacon so we're definitely seeing a pattern here all of these images have something edible in them and you might have noticed all of them are a white background and we have, they all have chocolate and they all have some type of shimmer to them and we probably saw some uh, there's two strawberries there, there's two brains there, that bunny is there, that's just one bunny but the bunny has two ears and then there's two pieces of bacon in this image here okay so hopefully you connected with those images hopefully you connected with them in a way you verbalized them you found patterns and you you were able to connect to some kind of story uh, the story is going to help evoke possibly emotion uh, either way the chocolate covered bacon in some of my other programs that I run some of the other classes that I conduct the chocolate covered bacon tended to evoke disgust people were not used to uh, bacon and chocolate together even though if you ask me sounds kinda good alright now we're going on to the name game here so there's this technique that you can use which is summed up which is um, this right here this is called the B suave technique and this is an acronym for different strategies on how to approach remembering names and a lot of people really get frustrated they get embarrassed when they forget people's names so this technique has definitely served um, those people that have expressed that emotion that experience of embarrassment with forgetting names so I hopefully this will do the same for you also the sweetest sound in anyone's native language is the sound of their own name so this will be doing a favor for those that you love and then even those that you're trying to get to know or just be polite to. So here is our, here is our uh, acronym, the different words for the different letters. B is for believe, be confident that you can do it. E is exercise, it's a skill, it takes time, just like learning a new language or riding a bike or learning a new skill. S, say it, so we're going to just say it out loud. Clark Gable, Clark Gable, Clark Gable. And then U is use it. So you repeat the name in the conversation. You don't say it more than three or four times because that gets a little awkward. You can even just tell them straight up that I have to say the name several times in order for me to help remember it better. You can even just tell them. And they probably won't mind. So Clark Gable, Clark Gable, Clark Gable. Just keep saying it. Um, origin of the name, where does Clark Gable come from? You might have to look that up. I'm not quite sure. Uh, my name, definitely uh, I know where it comes from. My mother's name, my, my mother's grandfather's name was Charles. She named me after him. And my name etym etymologically comes from the word charming. Uh, then next we go to visualize. Visualize, we're thinking about objects that rhyme with the name Clark Gable Clark. So Gable sounds like cable. Clark sounds like, so it's got to be an image, it's got to be a noun, so Clark. What does Clark, what is something that is a person, what is something that is a, a thing, so an actual thing, a noun, that rhymes with Clark and is something that you can remember. Gable sounds like cable, so you can think of a cable. Clark Spark, spark cable. So you can think of a cable with a spark, maybe like an electrical cable that's sparking. And so spark cable, Clark Gable. And of course, when you disengage with the person that you have just met, you can say goodbye and then their name. Goodbye, Charles. Goodbye, Clark. Or goodbye, Ernie. All right, so this is some new people. This is Gene Wilder. He was the actor who played Willy Wonka in the 1971 movie Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. So you might recognize him already. If not, then it's a name for you to remember. If you 
already knew his name, then that means your brain is looking through its own memory, and therefore it can use that as a way to remember the name. It's already there. It's already got the real estate in the cerebrum and the neurons to remember this brain. Name, sorry, not brain. Okay, so Gene Wilder. Gene, Gene, Gene. I can do this. I can remember his name. I can remember the name. Uh, I'll be patient with myself if I don't remember the name because it takes time. And then S, so I said it already. I'm going to use it. Gene, Gene, Gene. Ask, hey Gene, where did your name come from? We're going to say that his name came from the, a famous person that he knew called Eugene. This is actually true. So he looked it up and he, I, think, I believe he was a poet of some kind. His name was Eugene. And he just took the last four letters of Eugene, used that as, as his first name. And then we visualize what does Gene sound like. Sounds like jeans, pair of blue jeans. So we can visualize blue jeans. And blue jeans, blue jeans, blue jeans. And then, of course, goodbye, Gene Wilder. Have a good day. Now, we're going to skip him. We don't have so much time left. So, but uh, we'll see if you can remember Gene's name. And so th this was from the last presentation. If you were here for the last Live Brain Club presentation, hopefully you can remember who that is. His name was Greg. Hopefully you can remember who that is. That was Jared. And who is that? I'll give you a moment on this one. That is Gruber. And I'll give you a moment on her as well. And that is Sona. All right, so if you remember those, good job. All right, so let's move on to this week's brain topic. All right, so we're talking about chocolate and the brain. This is super exciting because chocolate is delicious to a lot of people. Even I know I've had my fair share of chocolate, even though I've found that it's not very good for my biology. But it does so many wonderful things to activate the brain and to have fun at the same time as activating your brain. So that's goal number one. And I'm sure if you do enjoy chocolate, even dark chocolate, this will not be very hard to incorporate into your daily brain, life, brain healthy lifestyle. All right, so how is organic dark chocolate healthy for the brain? Well, it activates the brain, number one, and we can see these different parts of the brain that are activated. Uh, we have the front part of the brain here, and uh, it does activate the working memory, and uh, that's located in the frontal lobe, and it has been shown to activate the hippocampus as well and activates the reward systems of the brain, which I believe is this sliver right here and then this oval shape right here. So those two are the reward systems of the brain and releasing dopamine into the brain so that we feel this sense of reward and stimulation in a positive way. So chocolate is, is a very great way to put the brain in a state of bliss. All right, so let's list some benefits here. Uh, makes you feel in love. It releases a chemical compound named anandamide. And this is very closely related to compounds found in cannabis. It's actually a class of cannabi can cannabinoid, a cannabinoid. And it is something that effectively gets you a little bit high. And then makes you feel great. It also releases, it the, when you ingest chocolate, you release feel-good chemicals called endorphins. So whenever, if you've ever gone to exercise, lifted weights, gone for a run, that runner's high that you get is thanks to a bunch of endorphins being released in the body, which are in the bodies. Uh, these are the body's natural opioids. So it's basically the body's morphine, and it's a hundred times more powerful than morphine. So it's probably worth helping your body to stimulate it in healthy ways. Also, the amazing thing about chocolate is it's highly, highly, highly anti-inflammatory. It has one of the most highest percentages of antioxidants in, of any food. And coffee and chocolate are definitely way up there. And you want raw, organic, dark chocolate so that you can actually get the benefits. If you have milk combined with chocolate, the milk proteins are going to surround themselves around the anti-inflammatory components 
and they will just pass straight through your body unused. So this is really important, dark chocolate for the benefits that you get from for the brain and the body. So make sure it's dark chocolate. Anti-diabetes, chocolate actually helps you improve insulin sensitivity and so that definitely is something you would want if you are at risk for diabetes or if you have diabetes. Now I'm not a doctor, I don't play one on the internet and I would encourage you to d discuss this with your doctor, functional medicine doctor, nutritionist, dietitian, etc. Okay, improve working memory. There's been studies of people who have tasks where they have to focus on juggling four more pieces of information at any one time in their their mind, in their memory, and they've been shown to have a 20% increase in effectively um, uh, using these pieces of information and remembering these pieces of information, so working memory is improved. And overall, there is an increase in the blood flow to the brain, and they looked at people who were consuming a given amount of chocolate over five days, taking brain scans, and they were seeing an increased blood flow to the brain. There are many, many other benefits. There is actually gut benefits to eating chocolate because the color, the brown, originally the color of chocolate is purple, but it turns to a brown after you ferment the chocolate. And these compounds, these colors, they are food for the gut bacteria. Um, and then that, therefore, affects the positive um, uh, state that the brain experiences because the gut is the second brain. The gut and the brain are interlinked by the vagus nerve. So there's many, many other things you could get into. And there's so many, there's so many nutrients, there's so many uh, magnesium, copper, phosphorus, calcium, uh, all very high in chocolate. So it's just, it's very nourishing and it also puts you in such a great healthy state. So go for some organic dark chocolate. And the reason why I emphasize organic is because chocolate trees Cultivated chocolate trees are some of the most highly sprayed with pesticides of any crop. So you've got to be really careful with the type of chocolate you buy and make sure that it's good quality chocolate and it's worth it too. Alright, so there's this video with this guy named Will Lidgate and it's called Changing the Way We Think About Chocolate. I would highly encourage you to Google this and check it out. It's well worth your time. And he discusses about uh, the fact that chocolate should be treated like a health food. And it's more like a fine wine or a fine cheese. And it's meant to be enjoyed. You smell it, you taste it, and you, you let it breathe like you with, with wine. And you just have an experience with it. It's not just something you, 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 you kind of like throw in your gullet and you swallow. And because a lot of times so people, they just get the, the hit of sugar. But in this case, we're not going to have chocolate with too much sugar. And according to him, you want to go for chocolate that is 65 to 75 percent dark chocolate. So that means that the cocoa powder, 65 percent of the weight of the chocolate is actually cacao powder, which is effectively the color in powder form. So you extract the fat and you extract uh, the fiber, you basically just have the powder left over from the chocolate bean itself. Alright, so let's do some chocolate trivia here. We'll just do a few here and see if you can quiz yourself. What does the word chocolate translate to from the Aztec language? Is it A, bitter water, B, sweet fruit, C, salty grain, or D, tasty treat? Alright, give you a few moments, see if you can think of it. If you guessed A, bitter water, great job. So this is a picture of the bitter water here, how it was prepared. And this is a display, or this is a picture uh, showing a display of a cacao ceremony or an exchange of this chocolate. Okay, and let's see Your this. Attention, please. Library is preparing to close in 15 minutes at 9 p.m. Breezeway restrooms are now locked for the evening. Desktop PCs will be shutting down in about 10 minutes. The library is preparing to close in 15 minutes at 9 p.m. 
All right, so there's just another announcement from the library. I've got to be done here in a little bit. Okay, so dark chocolate is the most pop popular among which group? Americans, women, college students, or men? A, Americans, B, women, C, college students, or D, men? If you guess men, you are correct. All right, next question. What does a chocolatier refer to? A tower of chocolate, A, B, a person who makes sells chocolate, C, a person who builds chocolate structures, or D, a chocolate policeman? If you guessed B, a person who makes slash sells chocolate, you are correct. And where does the main ingredient of chocolate originate from? It's the Amazon Basin. Yeah. All right, so that's the end of the trivia. Do you remember the names? Who is that? If you guessed Gene Wilder, you are correct. And we didn't do him, but his name is Will. He was the one who did the presentation uh, that I, I told you to check out earlier, Change the Way We Think About Chocolate. Do you remember the images to remember from earlier? So I showed you four images that we were going to verbalize, look for patterns, and connect to a story, and also connect to emotions. Do you remember those images? I'll give you a moment to do your best to recall them. All right, we had strawberries, we had brains, we had bunnies, or a bunny, and we had chocolate bacon. Okay, what do you remember about your partner's answers? So you can pause this here. Um, if you had an infinite supply of delicious brain healthy chocolate, who would you give to some? Who would you give some to first and why? For me, I would give it to my sister Camilla. Hopefully you remember your partner's answers if you got to do this with a partner. And hopefully, you, if you're doing this, if you're watching this on your own, then we'll, you can test your memory with what I said as far as the questions. And this is going to help train your mind to do this with people that you are talking with on a casual basis, even outside of uh, brain games or memory games. And this is going to get you so that you can engage more with person, be more comfortable with socializing. So why, why do you or don't you eat organic dark chocolate? Do you remember what I said? stimulates me too much and just something that doesn't work for me why is chocolate so romantic well I said it has something to do with being a cardiac stimulant and the, the biology for it just makes you feel really good so those are our goals if you remembered them good for you and I want to emphasize the taking action part for this the brain club this week and I have a sample goal for you uh, you can take this, you can use this goal if you want, or you can come up with one that's like this. So I, I challenge you to eat a piece of dark chocolate this week, and I want you to think of three people who have it or know where to get it. And I want you to write this down if this is actually your goal, or I want you to come up with a goal. And if you come up with a goal, come up with the next step that's super simple, and then write it down. Also, the goal can be really simple as well. This is not very hard one piece of dark chocolate in the week that's super easy and then the more you do the more the more you eat the chocolate uh, obviously there's such a thing as too much chocolate but if you're not eating any chocolate and you're actually your biology is okay with handling chocolate then the more you eat the better up into a point joke to remember alright here we go rules on enjoying a good piece of chocolate number one Share it with a friend. Number two, remember, rules were made to be broken. Yep, more chocolate for you. And if you're interested about learning anything in the future, please leave comments. You can leave them now or you can just write them if you're watching this, this video pre-recorded. So thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much for being a part of Whole Brain Health. Check us out at www.wholebrainhealth.org. Check us out on Facebook. Uh, we're at Whole Brain Health on Facebook. Just search for Whole Brain Health. And we're also on Instagram at Whole Brain. And uh, hopefully you do something good for your brain. And remember, if you have fun while improving your brain, you will improve your memory. All right, have a great day.